Hi, my name's Theet, and we're going to be talking about Age of Sigma battle tones for 2021. Now, ordinarily, Saturday for me, you're watching this on Sunday, but I would be waiting for the 40k pre-orders this weekend. Um, but what with everything, uh, with the pandemic delays in deliveries and so on, because Games Workshop won't release them a day early for that, never mind. I've actually been getting away with it. Bit of a streak, the last two, maybe three pre-orders I've actually had on the day. Ran out of luck with this one, as far as I know, it's not even been dispatched yet. So, oh dear, no new Necrons, no new Kill Team. Never mind. So what I'm uh, going to be doing today is to be taking a look at uh, ahead of Age of Sigma releases. Always tricky especially when Games Workshop, uh, I mean, they, they will sometimes throw you a googly in terms of new army battle terms. So for example, in 2021, what did we get? We got uh, Realm, um, you know, Luminous Realm Lords. To all intents and purposes, a brand new army. Yes, very much styled on High Elves. We sort of have the old High Elves with Cities of Sigma but a brand new range, every single model was brand new, the battle term was brand new, and it's a good one. Um, we even got two sets of dice. We got the first lot, which are all right, they're actually decent, then we got the second lot, which are like, okay. Um, but the, the, the fact of the matter is we got a new battle term for them. Last year, brand new army, it came at the end of a run. By the time the, Realm, uh, the Luminoff Realm Lords battle tome had come out, it wasn't like some people going, oh, but my battle tome, you know, isn't really fit for second edition. All of the battle tomes were fit for second edition. So it was sort of okay, some still older than others. That's fine. Then we get announced that in 2021, we're, and presumably because we've seen the artwork for the new battle tome, it's going to be sooner rather than later, we're going to be getting a new <laughs> Lumineth Realm Lords battle tome with a new range of brand new models. But it is also possible that Games Workshop will apply some, some small measure of logic to a few of the releases this year as well. So we're onto the territory of a mixture of need and hints. So hints, first of all, now, obviously, everyone is expecting an update to at least vampire-themed armies. Now, whether this is an updated Legions of Nagash battle tome or a specific Soul Blight battle tome is not yet crystal clear. There are pros and cons to each. Now, you know, if you take the current Legions of Nagash book, for example, you have in here rules for different themes. Um, if I can find them. So you could have a Soul Blight army, for example. Um, you know, there are various legions. Legion of Blood was the one I tended to favour uh, for a vampire-themed army. The reason being, it was useful, it buffed your Blood Knights, uh, which would form the core, of, certainly form the core of a Soul Blight army. But you also got the benefit of having the expanded range. You got access to Night Haunt units and Death Rattle units and all the rest of it. Whereas if you went for purely Soul Blight, and, and I very much liked the, the idea of Soul Blight because you could have special rules according to the Bloodline. You chose the Bloodline, bit of a, a, a link back to the old vampire counts. That was fine. The problem was massively reduced range as well. Um, so, you know, that's the way you, you sort of go Soul Blight, or you don't have to go Legions of Blood, that was my preference. You could have certainly have a vampire-themed army along any of the other lines. Um, but, but that's, you know, that's where we are with that. Um, so Legions of Nagash, an updated Legions of Nagash, would still allow that flexibility, uh, but also, you know, update the whole tome. Because it's not just that if you have a Soul Blight, new Soul Blight book, that that's now fine because it's not. Um, it is quite dated now, Legion of Gas. I would argue it's the most dated battle tome now. Yes, it, f it, it has the basics that you would expect of a second edition army, but it's a bit light. It was a bit rushed, I think. Um, so there we go. And, and, you know, I will also say, and I, the Blood Knights, on the Blood Knights models front. So last week we had um, 
they're doing, doing a new thing now where they reveal a new model on Monday, very late on on Monday. But anyway, revealed a new model. And it was another Vampire Lord. And I, I you know, made a comment on the Warhammer community's Twitter and got a response that, I'll be honest, is a bit of a cruel response if we do not get um, Plastic Blood Knights now. If we don't get Plastic Blood Knights, that would be a pretty cruel, because they could have just ignored me. Um, so now I'm thinking to myself, I'm breathing a little bit of sigh relief, thinking, oh yeah, the Blood Knights are coming. Still not 100%. But I'm looking at that comment and I'm thinking, oh, there's a bit of a hint that we're going to get the Blood Knights. And, and if we do get a Soul Blight Battle Tome, you know, then presumably that will have a slightly expanded list of available units. I, I wouldn't have thought it was just what's going to be in here, but it could be. There are some Battle Tomes that have, you know, not that many unit choices. But, you know, that can still be okay. I mean, Fire Slayers, you can say, well, they don't have that much choice. But it's, it's, it's a good list. You can make very good lists with it. Um, so, you know, that sort of looks okay. Um, then, you know, we, we, so we know we're going to get something for death. They're really hinting strongly on that. And I know that the models hinted so far are for other games, but, you know, the direction is very much in terms of a new death battle tome this year, which would be at least allowing for updated vampire lists. We know we're going to get the Lumineth Realm Lords battle tome. So we know that there's a Lumineth Realm Lords Battle Tome. We sort of know, although it's not officially been announced, we sort of know a Death Battle Tome. Which may or may not be specifically Soul Blight. Um, as I say, it could, or it could be just an updated Legions of Nagash. But then you'd think to yourself, so okay, so then Legions of Nagash, what about all the rest of the bits in it? It just stays. So the Legions of Nagash, which is dated, remains in, in orbit, in operation. But then if we think about other battle terms, so what else, what else could there be? The obvious one at this point would be Ideneth Deepkin. Now, leave, you know, leaving aside the, the remnants of Legion of Nagash, if we've got a soul by army, Ideneth Deepkin has um, the most dated battle term at that point, at the point at which, you know, you would think something has come out for Legion, to update Legion of Nagash in some part at least. Ideneth Deepkin remains the most dated. Now, it's not bad at all. Um, it contains most of the basic elements of a second edition battle tome. You know, when you compare the modern battle tomes with the very early first edition ones, um, you know, the newer features that are in here, you know, include sub-faction allegiances. It you know, those sort of specialties like for Daughters of Kenya, temples and so on. Um, as well as the, and the kingdoms for Lumineth Realm Lords, that sort of sub-factional allegiance, as well as individual spell laws, which were absent from the initial first edition battle terms, but they're there. You know, Ideneth Deepkin have got both of those features. And just to think outside the box, there are only two armies that don't now get, unless I'm forgetting something, those sub-factional specialisms, and that would be Night Haunt and Maggotkin. You know, they are, uh, they would be the remaining ones. Maggotkin of Nurgle, you know, it doesn't actually feel dated, but at the same time it does, it does, and it has your spell law sort of, um, but it, it's not much of a choice, mind you, because it's split into three different types, but it doesn't have sub-factional um, specialties, other than taking them from other supplements. Nighthorn also don't get that sub-factional specialism either. So those would be two other ones where you, you might not be surprised. So in theory, you know, if, if Games Workshop were going to apply a little bit of logic, and I know the Lumineth Realm Lords situation throws that into severe doubt, but you could absolutely think in terms of, you know, a death-themed year uh, in some ways, maybe Soul Blight, um, maybe an updated narrowed version of Legions of Nagash and maybe not Night Haunt. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eyelid if all three uh, battle terms came out this year, although I'm not saying I think that will happen. Um, as well as maybe Maggotkin of Nurgle and Ideneth Deepkin, um, which would, you know, make for a, a further, what would it be, six battle tome releases this year, which is well with, within them. I mean, 2019 was a massive bumper year. But I think that was rushing to get everything second edition fit. Um, but I'm not going to be joining the dots in that way because I am very wary of applying 
logic to GW release predictions. And also when you get onto the subject of need, different people have different ideas of need. Now for me, I like all of the army, so I don't really, you know, think, I don't have, this is my army, and therefore you're, I'm always thinking in terms of, oh, so I think I have something missing from this, therefore the need is greatest. And, and for a lot of people you do, some people identify with one particular army, they just collect one army, I mean, that's by far the cheapest and best way to do it because it means you better practice with that army, you'll play it better. But it also means that you often see the deficiencies in your own and think, well, I need a, a, a new battle tone more than any other. And if it's been a couple of years, you think, ah, oh, it's my turn now. Uh, and then disappointed when that is not what happens. But in terms of what GW have said, yeah, we know about the Realm Lords and we're safe enough with an assumption of at least one death battle tome with vampires featured strongly within it. Everything else is completely hint free and therefore just wild speculation. But I didn't deepkin. So I, I saw an interesting comment on a, a forum from someone saying that they shouldn't get a new battle tome because they'd had some love in the first Broken Realms, Broken Realms Marathi, uh, that supplement, and how it made some of their weaker units really strong now. So now they were looking really strong. And here's the thing. So if you think it makes them too strong, that's more reason to get a battle tome earlier because that would bring the whole thing into balance. But the overwhelming argument for me is, is simply that their current battle tome is now one of the oldest. And I know, you know, you don't just do a cycle of battle tomes and then do another cycle in exactly the same order. Um, you know, you have to consider, you know, which battle tomes stood the test of time and so on. And I wouldn't say they're in desperate need at all of a new battle tome. It's not like they're crying out for it. Legions of Nagash, yes, should have a new battle tome. Um, Iden's Deepkin, well, they don't need it. You know, theirs came out in 2018. It's just that it's one of the older ones. But they've got most of the essential elements, like I said. Um, but if you think about you know, a list of armies. I mean, what other army is there staking a claim for that update other than Nurgle and Nighthaunt, which don't have all those elements? And I know you can argue things like uh, armies that never received a battle term in the first place. Chaos Dwarves got a bit of a, uh, a Forge World supplement, but models are increasingly unavailable, so it's not really feasible. Um, Tomb Kings or Bretonians and so on, but they haven't had a battle term at all. There will be a reason for that. And, and we have to assume that those armies are not in their plans. Unless, of course, potentially for the new fantasy battle reintroduction. Plus there's the Legion of Nagash, like I said, which um, is, is definitely something coming in some form. And the fact that the updates in Broken Realms Marathi actually means that Games Workshop have been considering Iden of Deepkin because, you know, they did get some of their weaker units updated. They do like, look tasty. Oh, they look good. You know, so they've been in their thinking. So we certainly can say, uh, and we, we all, well, I would say we can't say that Broken Realms are a way of Games Workshop giving some love to a few weaker units that they're not, because you could think of it that way. You could see the Broken Realms supplements as Games Workshop going, right, well, these units haven't had any love for a while and they are a little bit weak. So we'll update those units, put them in a supplement because we're not planning on doing a new Ideneth Deepkin battle tome. Um, but you can't really say that that's the probable use of that supplement because Daughters of Cain, I mean, I have a Daughters of Cain army. I have access to a reasonable range of units and yet I didn't get to play a game with the new rules for Marathi Broken Realms because it came out during lockdown and it's been completely negated by the new Daughters of Cain battle tome in the same lockdown effectively. Um, so that's not really happened, uh, or at least restrictions that meant the gaming club couldn't be open. So yeah, we, 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 whatever Broken Realms Marathi is for, I think it's mostly narrative. I think it's mostly to pursue the story. Yes, you have updated rules for armies, but I don't think there's any rhyme or reason to which ones they choose to do that in. Um, but, you know, just finishing off, I think Legions of Nagash is the more complicated one. So, so Iden of Deepkin, I would just say, the only thing, if you were to think of what is missing, the only thing missing is endless spells. That's it. That's all that's missing. 
because um, you know they've got their own spell law and it's all decent. They've got units that are decent. Some of them are scary as hell. The Marty thralls are scary. They scare me. And they'll be scary when I get my own Iden of Deepkin army as well. Everything works. You can make a strong list. Is it absolute top tier? I don't know. It hasn't. It's been good, but not absolute top tier. Um, you know, it can it can win, um, but you wouldn't put it at the very very top. But at the same time, now with these stronger units, might you? I don't know. But it's certainly not weak. It doesn't need anything. Uh, endless spells are the only thing they have missing. But then if you think about Legion of Nagash, now that could get messy because the thing about Legion of Nagash is it needs replacing. It just needs replacing, it needs updating. If you bring out a Soul Blight Battle Tome, you don't replace Legions of Nagash. Legions of Nagash remains with the other Battle Tomes. So you could, if you wanted a Vampire Army, you could go with the new Soul Blight Battle Tome if that is what we're getting, or you could still make one with the Legion of Nagash. The only way to, to relegate the Legion of Nagash battle tome to the um, archive shelf is to replace it. And for that, there's only one of two ways you can do that. The messiest way is you bring out a Soul Blight battle tome, and then you bring out another battle tome which has like the Death Rattle and, and Death Mages and that sort of stuff, and you call that rattle majors and uh, and then you've covered everything and then Games Workshop announce they have to have an official announcement that Legion of Nagash is no longer current because you wouldn't otherwise know you would just see two new battle tomes coming out oh Legion of Nagash is still a battle tome and, and I'm still going to use it um, the only way to replace it is to do that and that's messy the tidier way to do it is to just update Legions of Nagash expand it significantly uh, so you've got your Soul Blight and Death Rattle and, and everything else within it, uh, just updated, and um, and you leave it at that. And then people realise that the this is the newer Legion of Nagash, so the, the older Legion of Nagash battle tome goes down a shelf. And that works, but then as people will point out, the, the narrative has moved on, Nagash's storyline has moved on, and, and, and maybe just from a narrative point of view, it should be split up into smaller bits. So, you know, one of those. But I think, I think the Legion of Nagash is arguably messier, but I don't know what's in their plans. But it wouldn't surprise me if we saw um, this after Lu Lef Lumineth Realm Laws, it wouldn't surprise me if this year we saw Soul Blight, something to cover the rest of Legion of Nagash that, that won't have an updated battle tome, Ideneth Deepkin, Maggotkin of Nurgle, and although I wouldn't necessarily expect it, Night Haunt don't have all of the elements. I, I, you know, if you were going to apply logic, you'd think about what are the elements of a second edition army and Night Hawk, Maggot Kin of Nurgle and Ideneth Deepkin are missing at least one element. Nurgle actually two, because they don't have the sub-factional uh, specialisms, they don't have the endless spells, and in actual fact, they, uh, they have a very limited uh, list of spells as well. But, uh, you know, those three armies, Ideneth, Legion of Nagash and, and Nurgle, um, oh actually four, sorry, Night Haunt as well, have at least one element missing. So it wouldn't surprise me for them to get updates, um, but it also wouldn't surprise me, I suppose, for them not uh, in all cases, because that's not necessarily how Games Workshop think about it. And also we don't know how potentially getting up for a third edition would throw things out the mix as well, because if that is coming, we do not know what Games Workshop's um, tagline for a third edition would be? What would be the, the change for third edition? What would it become defined by? We don't know that either. But those are my general thoughts anyway. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later.